let's make this coffee bar organizer. You can get the wood organizer at Craft Warehouse. It's three different wood containers. You'll need some Mod Podge. I'm going to use matte, but glossy is also available. A brush or a foam, disposable foam brush to apply. Um, we're going to use a coffee vinyl. And then this was super fun paper collection from Echo Park called Coffee and Friends. Let's get started. First, you want to um, measure your box to see what um, size paper you need to cut. I'm going to leave my wood natural, but you could paint it or stain it before applying the paper. So it's just shy of four inches across, and I think it's a square, but we are going to check the uh, length of this box too. No, it's actually a little shorter. It's three and three quarters. So I'm going to um, choose some cute paper to go with this now. <laughs> this is a really fun box, uh, organizer box. You do not, ha obviously you do not have to make this coffee themed. There are so many cute papers out there. You can make this match your decor. Um, you can make this for a friend. You can use this to make organizers for the bathroom, for your desktop, for whatever. It would be cute in the bathroom with like cotton balls in one and um, Q-tips in another and maybe hair ties in the third. That would be cute. Um, so I'm just trimming the paper to size and then I'm going to put this on all four sides of the box. So I'm going to cut this paper for the same measurement four times. And, um, and then repeat. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a, a different pattern for each box. The Coffee and Friends collection is so cute. I love the colors in it. So there's like the soft peach color. There's the different shades of green. Um, and all these papers are double sided. So there's so many options. Okay. And then now I have to choose a third paper. Having a good trimmer goes a long way <laughs> in your paper crafting projects. Okay, and then there's also these really fun cut apart papers, and I see a few um, sentiments I like, so I'm going to trim a couple of those out. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or not. Let's find out. These cut aparts are also great in scrapbook pages, too, or in card making. I really appreciate um, having these options. See, that's pretty cute. I just need to trim it a little bit shorter. I think that's kind of cute. Coffee is always a good idea. <laughs> so I think in your in a coffee bar you could put, um, now I wouldn't put like raw um, sugar, <laughs> you know, sugar granules in this, but you might put sweetener packets um, or, um, you know, K-cups maybe if you use those or um, coffee stirrers or other accessories like that, something that's that's packaged, um, you might put in, in these boxes. And certainly, I love that they come in their own little tray. It's all, it just keeps it all neat and organized. And then the pull at the top is actually leather. So it's pretty, it's um, really cool looking, very uh, fresh, you know. Um, I'm just, I'm cutting out all of these little sentiments and I'm loving all of them. I just, I can't decide which one I like better. Life begins after coffee. <laughs> but then um, I get to looking at this one and it was just kind of framed already and I'm going to have to cut off part of the framing and just this is just the design of the paper but as I do that I realize that um, the cute little element on there that I like so much is kind of hanging off into the pink area so I'm going to hand trim around those little leaves with a pair of scissors and the bottom with that vase and I really like that. I really like the way this looks. It gives a, a handmade look, but it doesn't, it's not difficult to do at all. See, I just trimmed around the bottom of the vase and around a couple of those leaves. And then I, essentially I'm just going to trim off anything that was pink uh, on this little border. And then I have this really cool off the edge element. Okay, so starting to get ready. Let's put it together. Um, so 
we are going to remove the lid, set all that stuff aside, and then we need to get the Mod Podge. And a um, little tip. Um, it's not a big deal, but um, this product is decoupage glue. And it can be used for a lot of different things. Um, but this particular brand is often mispronounced. Um, so many times people ask for or talk about it calling it Modge Podge. It's not Modge Podge. It's Mod, M-O-D, Podge. Mod Podge. We know what you mean when you ask for it, but it's just kind of cute. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm making sure I have the right side of the paper. And then I'm going to use my brush and get on a little bit of this Mod Podge and put it right on the wood itself. This um, Mod Podge or decoupage glue is glue and sealer in one. So you're going to put it underneath that which you want to glue and on top. So here is acting as the glue and I'm going to, while it's wet, lay on my paper and adjust it to make it straight. And then right away go back and put another layer of the Mod Podge on top and that will act as the sealer. And this will keep your, this will not only keep your paper down, but it seals the entire project. It does come out white, but it will dry totally clear. I just want to do smooth, even strokes all the way across. You do not have to do a solid sheet of paper like I am here. You could tear the paper into smaller bits. You could Mod Podge or decoupage on tissue paper, um, decorative napkins, uh, different kinds of pattern paper, um, all you know, postcards, all different kinds of paper products can be wrapping paper. So you just got to find a paper that or a design that on paper that you really love, and you know, it's easy to adhere. When you first set the paper on top of the glue, you have wiggle room or wiggle time, I like to call it, um, to adjust the paper and get it straight. And it dries, your first cut will dry pretty quickly. You can go back and add a second coat if you want to. It's better to do, um, don't put it on super thick though, because then it's going, you're going to see, it's going to dry in the, um, your brush strokes will be seen and it will dry that way. So better to do a thin coat and then if you feel like you need another one, you can always go back and add another. Less is more. <laughs> you want full coverage, but you don't need to, you don't need thick full coverage. Mod Podge is also great for um, permanently putting together puzzles. And on the, on the bottle, you'll find instructions for that. There are different kinds of Mod Podge. Um, there's even outdoor, and there's a kind with sparkle or glitter in it mixed in. Those are fun, but they do have a little bit of a smell, just so you know, while you're using them. Um, there's also dishwasher safe Mod Podge. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of different kinds. And um, another little known fact, if you use a paint palette, I'm not using one here, but if you use one, you can mix paint and Mod Podge together and create a colored Mod Podge, or essentially a paint that is also a sealer. You do not have to use Mod Podge as only a glue or the paint really, um, with paint you can just mix it in and it's both, <laughs> get two jobs done at once. Okay, finishing up the paper on this box and then you just are going to repeat with the other two. It's um, a very fast project, um, it goes along really quickly. So one thing you, other thing you might want on a project like this is something to rest the um, finished um, uh, boxes on because the Mod Podge is still wet and needs a little bit of time to dry. And I didn't want those just sitting, even though I didn't put any glue on the bottom, just to be safe, um, I didn't want those resting on my surface. So I just elevated them on a stack of um, washi tape rolls. That's just what I had handy in front of me. You could use an egg carton or disposable cups or something like that. Just something to elevate it up above the surface. Now it's time for the vinyl. I already dried the box that I want to use it on. So it's, I let it sit and dry, but you could speed dry with a heat tool if you wanted to. 
So with the vinyl, I rubbed over the top with um, a bone folder. You can also use the back side of a butter knife or the edge of the credit card. Find the side of the box you want to add the vinyl to and stick it on kind of like a sticker and then rub it over, just smoothing out the vinyl with your fingers. And then you're going to use that blunt edge tool again to rub over the top of the vinyl. And this is transferring the vinyl to your surface. Make sure you get the edges and inside any loops if you have, um, if you're doing a word like this. And then when you think you have it, you start to peel back from one corner, looking to see if it has transferred. And if it hasn't, lay the paper back down and rub in that area again until it can transfer. There, and then just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Good. Until you see it's an area that doesn't come up, you just rub it back on the paper side first. There you go. Easy. Okay, and um, you'll notice I went ahead and added paper, um, the little cutout papers to the other boxes. I just, while the Mod Podge was still wet, I just used, I just put another layer of Mod Podge on top and another over the surface to get those two little labels done. Isn't that cute? It's really quick and easy to do this project. Love it. I can't wait to use it. Hope you make a fun project today.